Fifty Shades of Grey wasn't as dark as we think it is. This book has sold over 100 million copies worldwide, and it's been translated into 52 languages. Why do women love this story so much? If you've lived under a rock over the last couple of years, let me just tell you an outline of what this is about. It's about a very wealthy man who's very, very attractive. He has a cruel and aloof demeanor, but he relentlessly pursues a chaste young woman named Anastasia Steele. She's very interested in him. He's very attractive. She's curious. And away we go with a complicated relationship where he's asked her, and she has consented, to be his submissive. Now, what has made this story so spectacularly both controversial and popular is this upsetting BDSM imagery. And what I mean by BDSM, I mean bondage, discipline, and sadomasochism. What I understand about BDSM, it is a set of behaviors and proclivities a certain proportion of the normal population experience for pleasure. It is not to be consumed be, be confused with sexual sadism disorder, which is what you think of when you think of the serial murders and torture. It's not that. This is between consenting adults, and in fact, if you were to Google BDSM, which I bet you will after this talk, you will see its Wikipedia page has consent or consensual no fewer than 82 times as of last night, 6 p.m. <laughs> so the mean world has responded very gently in response to this story. The social commentary world has not been so gentle. In fact, when I read the, the Atlantic, it was likened to rape in women. Newsweek talked about the erotization of powerless and powerlessness in women. And Newsweek informed me, a psychologist, I did not know this, that most women harbor deep-seated fears of abandonment and that this story was predominantly about abuse. When I read these types of critiques, I think, What's wrong with women? And my worry is that it leaves you with the very same taste in your mouth, asking the question, what is wrong with women? In fact, this image came to mind. I, this is what you get when you, you Google hysterical Victorian woman, by the way. A woman that's so conflicted about sex, she doesn't know what she wants or why she wants it. If you're looking for solace, you're not going to find it in the literature. For over a hundred years, women's sexual fantasy of this ilk has been pathologized. And what I mean by pathologized, I mean that the theories speak to that they come out of a place of weakness in women or a sickness. It started with Freud. He talked about women being naturally inhibited. We heard Maslow's name today. He talked about women being innately masochistic, meaning deriving pleasure from pain and humiliation. And then in the 70s, we are eroticizing men's subjugation of us. And then in the 80s, we hear about sex guilt, that women feel so guilty about sex that we can only imagine having it if it is taken from us. But what if Fifty Shades of Grey isn't so unusual after all? Does the storyline sound familiar to you? It should, because we see it in the vampire genre. <clears throat> The vampire genre has been for, um, around for over 100 years, and we have a, a narrative about an erotic relationship between a very powerful male who craves a young, chaste woman. And what we discover under the surface is that in the end, he's very devoted. And bonus points if you get two of these alpha males competing for you, as we recently <laughs> saw in True Blood, Twilight, and of course, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But this may still be a little too dark for you. How about adding a little color? Behold the bodice ripper. <laughs> and my personal favorite, this one, looks like a dog. <laughs> Mainstays of these stories are the alpha male, the chaste young woman, the relentless pursuit of her. He captures her, he captures her heart. She succumbs to the power of his craving, and she tames him. Now, where does the power lie in this relationship? Does it lie where you think it does? Do you think it lies in Fabio with his amazing pecs and the force? Because at first glance, that's what the covers will tell you. But in fact, the writers of these narratives mean for you to identify with the heroine. 
If you identify with the heroine, you realize that she has the power in the relationship. She's the one who captured the alpha male and tamed him. And we see this also in Fifty Shades of Grey. For those of you who've read the book, you know that he is constantly saying things like, what have you done to me, Anastasia? I was never like this before. It's you, you, only you. He's amazingly surrounded by all these beautiful women, and he only has eyes for her. What E.L. James did for us to make it easy for us to identify with her is she made... He made, she made her kind of clumsy, kind of real, easy to believe. And that was on purpose. So I call this the forceful submission fantasy. Now, some of my colleagues out in the field call these rape fantasies. I don't agree with that moniker. When you take women through the reality of rape and you ask them to imagine it, it is very scary and it's very undesirable. These stories, on the other hand, are a multi-billion dollar industry. Women do not find them fearful. So in this narrative, I use a mind to take, which I'm going to launch in my research here. Um, you can see masculinity, you can see force, you can see token resistance. And I can have a discourse with someone forever. Is this rape or not rape? But this is where the psychology comes in. This is where I'm going to actually study the phenomena. So forgive me while I get a little researchy on you. If you were in my study, I would have you read a rather long vignette. And this vignette was modeled after what I found in Mind to Take. We did this two years at, uh, before Fifty Shades of Grey, by the way. And so what you see is you see romantic imagery, try not to betray her curiosity, eyes, sexual disarming. You see force that's highlighted in pink. You don't see it very well. She attempted to draw away because he grasped her arm like a bite, etc. And then you have sex, explicit sex, which I was told I needed to edit out. Sorry. So, if you were in my study, though, you would read it, and I would ask you what percentage of your fantasies match this one. And what we found is, aha, there it is. This is a woman's fantasy. More than 50% of the women report that more than 50% of their fantasies are of this variety. But while I was studying women, I was doing something else that other studies weren't doing. I'm going to study men as well. And so, gentlemen, you are also reading my vignette and telling me the exact same things that the women were. I wanted to know, how much does this match your fantasy? And look what we find, is that over 50% of the men also report this is their fantasy over 50% of the time. So it is not a woman's fantasy. So why then are we hand-wringing, asking, what is wrong with women, and trying to think of theory to play women's predilection for this fantasy, when it appears to be a fantasy that men and women have? So the additional thing we did was like, OK, the conventional wisdom is that women fantasize about submission and men fantasize about dominance. And what we had you do in my study was read the fantasy, and you be the submissive one, and then have you imagine yourself as you being the pouncer. So you're either the penalty or the pouncer. And we simply asked you, what is your preferred role? And we did this with men and women. And these numbers are representing the preference scores. And what you see here is women do prefer the submissive role of this fantasy. That's right. Men actually prefer the submissive fantasy over the dominance fantasy. Suggesting that men actually prefer this fantasy more than women do. So that the conventional wisdom has now just been turned on its ear. When you read these data, you can see that women fantasize about submission more than they do about dominance. Men fantasize about dominance more than women fantasize about dominance. But men also dig submission more so than women. And that has gotten completely lost in the conversation. And in fact, if you were to do a Google search on men with writing cough, and woman with riding crop. You get a very unsexy picture of an 18th century equestrian for a young lady. And then a very sexy mobile young woman, woman with a riding crop. I know that picture wasn't meant for me. So, men also enjoy these fantasies. Who enjoys this fantasy more? Some of you women in the audience are thinking, well, ooh, this isn't for me. These are scary fantasies, and I get that. In fact, being a dominance researcher, I've looked at the different predilections between dominant women and non-dominant women. And what we find is it's the aggressive, assertive woman who knows what she wants is exactly the one who is drawn to this type of fantasy. And this is quite contrary to that slide I showed you about the literature, where it's the anxious, inhibited woman that is drawn to these masochistic fantasies. 
nothing further could you please do. So I'm not done with you yet. You're in my study, and I have you read this two and a half page vignette. And I think it's high time that we start asking the reader, what does this fantasy mean to you? And so because you're in a psychological study, you have 50 questions I ask you, and all on a one to seven scale, I'm asking you to agree or disagree. And you're going through, yep, that, 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 no, not that, not that. And I ask you about the prestige that this character gives you in your fantasy. Does it make you feel like you're irresistible to this character? Does it assuage the doubt that you have um, about yourself to this character? I ask about masochism. We need to know, is this a masochistic fantasy? Are you having this fantasy because you enjoy being humiliated? Then I ask you, who is it that you're fantasizing about? Who is that person that is your, what we call, fantasy object? Who's your Christian Grey? And we ask, is he attractive? She attractive? Gentlemen, you're reading the same items. Is he or she unattractive, have unattractive character characteristics? Is he or she loving and attentive and monogamous? Are they in command? This is the language that's in the romance novels, aggressive with other members of the same sex. Are they successful? Are they wealthy? Are they high status? Are they sexually potent? And yes, we're referring to physical characteristics here as well. Romance novels are very explicit. So was I. <laughs> is he an ally? Is she an ally to you? Was she a provider? Now, this is a lot of questions, but we found that through agent factor analysis, mathematical stuff, is that these things could be grouped into four major categories. Romance, the individual is attractive, loving, it's a monogamous relationship. The dominant partner, their success, they're successful, they're in command, they're sexually potent, they're skilled, they're endowed. Self-enhancement, the prestige and assuaging your doubt, and then the ally and provider. So what we found in mean ratings um, between men and women is first glance at this, you can see that this is a story predominantly about romance and love. And that may surprise you though probably not the women who have read Fifty Shades of Grey. Second is it the potency, that success, that wealth, seems to be an important aspect of this narrative. To a lesser degree, self-enhancement. An ally and provider is important to women, and we certainly saw this in Fifty Shades of Grey. There's two things about this slide I want to point out. That the meaning that men put on this fantasy is very similar to the meaning of women do. And also notice that masochism isn't up there. Why? Because masochism played virtually no role. The scores were so low on masochism, people simply said, no, this is not about humiliation to me. This is not about pain. <laughs> so what we have is the perfect formulaic representation of the hero character in a romance novel, Christian Grey. He's good looking, he's alpha, he's very sexually skilled, he's endowed with masculine characteristics, he's wealthy, he's generous, he's in love with her, it's about monogamy, it's about her flying her here and there, and being committed to the relationship. So then the question might become, where does the force come in? Why force? Why is that an element in so many of these novels? And we ask that question too. Why are these things, what's driving the preference of these fantasies? So here we go again, here's my Vignette, again, with out the sexy sex. Um, and this has elements in it. You can see things I've underlined. Um, eyes central in this army. Try not to betray your curiosity. There's the forces in bold. You attempt to draw waves. Blah, blah, blah. There is an opportunity for you to say stop, that words fail you, and whoops, daisy, here you go. Um, what's interesting about the way that we study this is now I can take out very systematically elements of the story to see if you still like it. So what we did was we took out all the bits and pieces that indicated romance and had a group of participants read it and tell us their preference. We took out all the bits and pieces referring to sex, had a group of participants read it and tell us their preference. And then we took out all the bits and pieces about force and had to read it, read for preference. Taking the sex out of the erotic tale, any guesses? <laughs> Preference goes down. People want eroticism in their erotic tales. But the important point here is when we took out the force, the needle fairly budged. It wasn't about the force per se, and I wasn't surprised. It wasn't about masochism. The previous study showed us that. So one other thing that we needed to do to, to see its similarity with a romance novel, which we couldn't take out, and that is that 
ardent pursuit by the monogamous fantasy object, the one who's only after you, you, Anastasia, it's only about you. We couldn't put it, we couldn't take it out. So instead, we put one little line at the top saying something that cast in doubt that this individual is coming only after you. Uh, you seem to have seen him, her, come out of a room with somebody else, and now they're leading you into the bedroom. Guess what happened to preference ratings? They went down as well. We really prefer that, that passionate, romantic pursuit by the individual who's craving us, if you will. So, what is this fantasy about? Thoughts ask. It is about passionate love, normal human motivations and desires with a really hot food. <laughs> <laughs> so, ask if you will what is wrong with women. What if women, like men, were just people? Thank you.